Hey guys, welcome. In the last two lectures, we integrated Firebase. Now, in this lecture, we are going to set up Firebase. Okay, now what you have to do is to click on Build. And over here, you can see we have this authentication. We can then click on that. And, and if this is your first time, this is going to be what you will see. And what you have to do is to click on Get Started. Click on the Get Started. And you can see over here, it says uh, Get Started with Firebase Art by adding your first sign in method. Now, in order to use the, or in order to allow users being able to create an account based on their email and password, we have to enable this. Okay, click on this. And we then have to click on Enable and click on Save. Okay, we're still gonna add some more, add new provider. And in order to allow users being able to sign in with Google, we also do need to enable this. Okay, click on Enable. And you can see it's asking for the project support mail. And it's going to be our default mail, which is attached to this account. Okay, we can then click on save. Okay, wait for this. Wait for this. And we can then add a new provider again. And in order to allow users being able to sign in with their phone number, we also do need to enable this and click on enable. And click on save. Okay, seems good. And you can see we also do have for Facebook, we have for Play Games, we have a lot of it. Okay, we, we also do have for Twitter and Microsoft and Anonymous as well. Okay, and now we can click on Build again. Click on Build. And you can see we have the Firestore database. So basically, all our data are going to be stored over there. Okay. And if this is your first time, it's going to show you this. And what you have to do is to click on Create Database. And you can see, basically, we have the Start in Production Mode. We also do have in Start in Test Mode. And basically, you can, you can just go for any of this. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to go for the Start in Test Mode. And click on Nest. And I'm just going to go with the default Enable. And you can see now provisionary uh, cloud Firestore. And you can see that was one, but that was uh, why we have to install the cloud Firestore package. Remember, we had earlier installed the cloud Firestore package. And the reason for that is so we are going to be able to refer to this database. Okay, seems good. And I think it's done. Okay, great. And basically, you can see we have the stats collection. And in the future, we're going to have a collection called maybe, uh, maybe vendors. And all our vendors are going to be stored within this collection. And all our, each vendor we're going to have is going to have something known as UID or ID. And each vendor is going to have a field known as maybe email, right? We can then say maybe Mac or Gmail come and for sure the vendor is going to have some other fields and you can then click on save maybe for now okay this is going to take okay you can see it now you can see we have this vendors collection and currently we just have one vendor right you can see and the vendor has this field uh, called email and it is set to mac at gmail.com and you can see this is a test so it is a type of string, okay. But one major thing we have to do over here now is to go to the rules. And the reason for this is because in the future, we are gonna be able to upload data to the database, but currently the rules won't allow us being able to upload data and also being able to retrieve. So we have to set these rules so we are able to uh, upload and receive data. You can see, it's basically saying allow read and write if request or time is equal to this. That is only when we are going to be able to uh, read and write data. 
but what we can do is we can get rid of this over here get rid and now we can get, add this over here okay and what we're basically saying is we want to allow read and write that is we want to be able to post and retrieve data or write data or read data okay now click on publish and everything is set and now we can post data and also we can retrieve data and over here in the future we're going to have a lot of collections okay you can see now we have this vendors collection and basically all our vendors are going to be stored over over here and you can see currently we have this vendor and remember each vendor is going to have uh, a vendor id and this is what you see seen over here during the future you're going to see this to the fullness i'm just going to get rid of this collection because we're not going to be creating it manually okay click on delete okay and now we have to click back on the build the build over here Still deleting, we just have to wait for this. Okay, click on build. Okay, you can see we also do have the storage. Remember, we had Helia install the Firebase storage, and the reason we had to install that was because we 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 want to have we want to be able to refer to this because in the future users are gonna be able to post files such as images, right? So in order to do that, we also do need to configure the rules because default, we're not going to be able to post images and also retrieve images. So in order to do that, we also do have to configure these rules. You can see currently it says if uh, allow read and write, and we can just get rid of this if force. Basically, what we are saying is we want to allow read and write. That is, we want to be able to post images and also we want to be able to retrieve images. And you can see over here. So to upload file, you can just click on this and you can see we have this create folder. You can first of all create a folder and in the future, we're going to have the banner, the banners, maybe a folder called banners. And inside that banners, all our banners are going to be stored. We can then upload all our uh, images or all our banner images in that banner banners folder okay seems good and this is basically how we need to do in order to set up firebase you can see basically what we just did was to uh allow read and write so we are able to post data and also being able to retrieve data and for the authentication in the future users are going to be able to sign in using their email and password and also their phone number and also google and in order to do that we also do need to enable it from the authentication tab and this is what we basically did and also in the fire store database which is also referred to as cloud fire store what we basically just did also was to allow read and write so we are going to be able to post data to and retrieve data right and this is basically all we are doing okay i think i have some network issue okay you can see where this is the rules and you can see currently we have this allow read and write to be able to read and write data and hopefully understand all this but if you don't please do well to let me know and i'm fully available to support you 